Welcome to this short video on using Migration DX. I'm going to start by installing the Automation FX software. So I just run the MSI file. This is a self-hosted web application, so we need to provide a port number uh, that the web server runs on. We'll just use the default 8181. And uh, you have to be aware that Migration DX is a feature that runs on our Automation FX platform. It's actually a subset of migration FX which works with all endpoint types but this particular variant is going to focus on converting DX endpoints only. So now that the admin interface is uh, open, I'll just make that bigger for now, we can add a cluster. So I go to the clusters page and I'll just give it a friendly name and we'll put in the IP address of the publisher. I've created a admin user account already, so we'll use this. The details can be found on this info button in terms of connectivity uh, to and from the cluster, as well as the permissions that are required for that admin user account. I click save. It's now validated uh, connectivity to the publisher and permissions with that account. So it's now prompting us to log out uh, from the guest account and log in as a proper cluster user account. So I'll click OK and it takes us to our login interface. I'm just going to use the same account to log back in. In this case it's on the cluster. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually reduce this refresh interval from one minute down to 10 seconds. This is how quickly we query uh, for changes on Communications Manager. There are a few uh, specific settings to pay attention to. Uh, by default, we keep the old phone, so when we convert from one model type to another, uh, we can uh, basically uh, choose to remove that. Uh, so it gives you an easy way to go back. We can update the description by appending the migrated tag, and uh, you can also work with the, the phone templates that the software creates as well. So I'm now on the phones page. So this is showing us the DX endpoints that are on this cluster. I'm just going to rearrange the columns. So I'm just going to take a, a few columns away and uh, I'm going to add in a few others as well. I'm going to add in status reason, phone load and firmware. Now that we have uh, the phones available to us, we can actually get ready to convert them. And the way we're going to do that is change the phone load. Uh, now we do that in Call Manager. So let me just pull this out and we'll arrange the windows. Uh, so I'm going to go into each device and I'm going to go to the phone load field. And I've already got it in my clipboard, so I'm just pasting in the firmware version. This is the initial CE version of the operating system. It's currently running a beta release of Android. The minimum production build is 2.07. It's important that you upgrade to the right Android version first. And if I save and apply, I'll go back and do the other device. So we're going to convert over two endpoints. So again, I'll set the phone load. And what I can also do, we have this refresh feature on the phones page. So when you turn that on, uh, it will automatically update the content uh, of this page uh, on a regular basis. So we can see that already we have synchronized the phone load information across that's been set. And it will also refresh things like the registration status uh, of the endpoints. So we'll, we can wait for those phones to uh, reboot and start upgrading. What I'll show you in the meantime is how you can actually control the settings of uh, the kind of device specific settings. So if I go to bulk admin tool phones and phone template, what we've actually done already is I've created a phone template with a special naming 
convention that we have and what happens is all devices that convert over to uh, the TP for telepresence uh, DX model type they will get uh, matched with this template and they will pick up product specific settings from this template so if I go into the template and I scroll down we can see I've enabled uh, web access on here and we've also set uh, a custom admin username and password so what happens is the later stage when we convert the device over it will match this template and it will use the settings from there with the refresh turned on we can now watch the status information update so now that the firmware has been upgraded to the CE operating system on both endpoints what we can see is the registration is currently rejected and the reason why it's rejected is because there is a model mismatch currently in communications manager the model type is Cisco DX 70 however the endpoints now appear as though a Cisco Telepresence DX model type hence the model mismatch also note that currently uh, the record and call manager is it's running the Android firmware but that's uh, out of sync at the moment once the endpoint registers that will update with the correct running operating system so to do the actual conversion of the model type we just do a selection of the rows like so we go to convert DX and then choose the two telepresence option in this case we get a confirmation screen just confirming that we're going to convert two devices from uh, Android to CE operating system I say OK to that so that submitted the migrations and to track that progress I'm going to go to the history page so this is the where the migration histories are listed if I go to columns I'm going to add in the results column I'm just going to take out the new name because that's not really relevant and I'm going to start the refresh on this page as well so as those migrations complete they are added to the history page automatically because it's refreshing so we can see that's now complete we've got a result of success for both of them we can see it's converted from Cisco DX70 to Cisco Telepresence DX70 if I click on the log button this gives us more detailed information on each of the steps on a, a relative kind of time frame basis as that's converted over if I now go back to the phones page we can now see that those devices now appear as the Cisco Telepresence uh, DX endpoint types uh, they're currently still rejected uh, but if we give them a moment or two for them to reattempt they will now be able to register and uh, a point to note because by default we keep effectively a backup or the old phone as we call it the original model uh, the DX70 for both of these still exists on call manager and all we have done automatically is prefix with BAT so that means that later on we can go in and delete those devices uh, once everything is good but we can also convert back the way and if it does detect a BAT device with the same MAC address it will instead of uh, reconverting it will simply rename and use that device so it ensures that you maintain all of the product specific configuration from that original endpoint so excellent we now have those two DX70 endpoints running CE operating system fully registered and online and just to show you the configuration in call manager if I now go to the device page again we see the same devices listed but what I'm going to do is open up one of the phones we can see again it's registered in call manager and if I scroll down we can see that the web access is enabled it's picked up uh, even the room name that we had set on the template and if I go down to the admin username and password uh, it has picked up the DX admin property as well and that was because we had prepared the system by creating a phone template with the corresponding naming convention. You may never need to send an engineer to site again.
www.unifiedeffects.com.